our top five biggest Bears draft busts that played at Soldier Field. Would you would you like to go first here, Schmitty? Yeah, I I'd love to. It's my honor. And like we said, this is it's tough to limit it to just five. You know, it's uh Bears first round picks have uh been bust more often than they've been hits, but um, I'm not going to go all the way back to the days of Stan Thomas because, like you and I, we both know about the former Texas Longhorn lineman, top 10 pick. But um, I don't know how modern Bears fans or younger Bears fans, fans younger than you and I, will remember Stan Thomas. So I try to keep it a little bit more modern within the last 20 plus years or so. But uh, like we said, plenty of ammunition to work with. Got a couple running backs that you mentioned at the top of the show. My number five biggest Bears draft bust. Cedric Benson, another Texas Longhorn, something about Texas football players busting in the NFL. RIP Cedric Benson. When I was thinking about this, I was like, oh man, it's like, it's, it's sad that, that he's gone. You, for, you forget about that. But short career here with the Bears, had a couple of good thousand yard seasons with the Bengals, but top five pick in, in a year where there were three running backs picked in the top five Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams, the two Auburn guys. We're never going to see that with three backs going in the top five again. Um, but didn't like that, especially because Thomas Jones was such a stud for the Bears, such an unnecessary pick. The guy I wanted in that draft was Mike Williams, the, the big beastly receiver out of USC. He didn't really quite work out either with the Lions, but um, you know, not like that would have been any better. But it was just bad because it really alienated Thomas Jones in that locker room that loved him so much. So uh, for me, I had to start with Cedric Benson, five. Number four, David Terrell, the Michigan wide receiver, number eight overall pick. Guy had injuries, and then when he wasn't hurt, he was just bad. He, he just wasn't good. Um, thankfully, that Bears draft class, they were able to get his college teammate, Anthony Thomas, the plotting running back, who was the offensive rookie of the year at that year. So uh, that kind of salvaged things a little bit, but David Terrell just couldn't get anything going here for the Bears. Number three biggest Bears draft bust, another wide receiver, Kevin White. Guy was a, a freakish athlete, kind of had all the size, height, weight, speed, everything from West Virginia. Had a, a really awesome, monstrous game in his season opener against Alabama to really kind of raise his profile. Dude just had one injury after another. You kind of wonder, you know, what could have been had he not had those just, you know, myriad injuries. So, just didn't work out for him. It stinks. Uh, but nevertheless, Kevin White was a bust. Number two, Curtis Enos, the Penn State running back. Top five pick. Guy just absolutely stunk. This is when he had the, the long track record of, of Penn State running backs, Eugenia Carter, Curtis Enos. Neither one of them could, could really do anything here in the NFL. And for me, this was just uh, an awful memory here. I'm at a track meet, and my number one guy, another story, the, the draft took place, I'm at a track meet, and everybody wanted Randy Moss. I, I mean, everybody, except for the Bears and really like 18 other general managers. But I'm hoping against hope the Bears can draft Randy Moss. And this is the day before you know, everybody had an iPhone in their pocket and you know everything was accessible. And I'm out like by the shop, put in the discus area. And I'm like, oh, who did the Bears draft? Who did the Bears draft? And, you know, the dads and the moms, they start chatting. It's like, oh, they took Curtis Edis. They took Curtis Edis. And I was just so mad. I was like, this guy sucks. Like, he's not going to be good. Like, why would you not take Randy Moss? And, of course, Randy Moss turned out to be uh, you know, pretty solid. Had a, had a pretty decent career. Um, and Curtis Edis had anything but that. So that was just, gosh, that was infuriating. That, that hurt so bad. And. Now, he would probably be number one, if not for the Bears' biggest draft bust, being Cade McNown, the, the lefty quarterback out of UCLA. I just personally, you know, some guys, you know, they're just not talented, whatever. Like, it's, it's, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Your, your, your skills, your ability from college, it just doesn't translate to the next level for a million different reasons, whatever. But this guy's attitude, it was like, we think Jay Cutler had like a, you know, a don't care attitude, you know, laissez-faire, whatever. Cade McDown was 100 times worse than Jay Cutler, had a very punchable face. I hated that guy from the moment they I hated him at UCLA. And it, it was even worse because, again, I'm at a track meet. We're at Glenbard West. 
And I hear like, oh, the, the Bears drafted down. And this was the, the quarterback loaded draft. Tim Couch goes one, Donovan McNabb, Achilles Smith. I'm like, oh, man, that'd be great if they could get Dante Culpepper. This dude is going to be a stud. Like this dude from UCF, he's, he's just built different, you know? We think he's going to be really good. And I hear they draft or that they trade down. I'm like, oh, this is definitely for Dante Culpepper. Like I think this is going to be good. And then like an hour later, I hear – you know, the Vikings move up to get Culpepper and the Bears get Cade McNown, the fifth quarterback in the first 12 picks or whatever. And I'm just like livid. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, again, the Bears screwed this up again. Uh, but that's pretty much been the story following the Bears draft. It's like, oh, my God, they screwed it up again. But, yeah, Cade McNown, biggest Bears draft bust for me. I, you know, 25 games he made in the NFL. He had a total of 15 starts, Cade McNown. 15 big starts. Uh, let's see. He had eight touchdowns in both his uh, – in 99 and in 2000. Just looking at it here. He was 2-4 and four in 99, 1-8 in 2000. It, it, you know how hard it is to not get picked up by any other team? As, yeah. As, I mean, that, that's, a, that's an enormous accomplishment. But uh, we, have, we have some overlapping here, Schmidt. We uh, – we'll get – I – you know, I, we flipped three and two – but uh, I didn't even put Kate on my list. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm well, very curious to hear your, your five now. I, I'm not even, I, I'm not even saying I'm right. Cause there's just so many, so many uh, options, but I, I, I combined it with the reason why I didn't put, put McNown on there is because if you look at that draft after him, there wasn't any like obvious selection. Not that there weren't uh, obviously a zillion other better picks. So I left him off, which is why I did start all the way back in time. 91. Number 22 overall, the Bears draft Stan Thomas. 11 picks later, 11 picks later, the savior of the franchise could have been Brett Favre, uh, but no, he goes to Atlanta and then to Green Bay. Thomas for his career, 56 games, 26 with the Bears, 30 with Houston, a combined total of seven starts. I mean, that when you just look at that, and like when, when you look at one draft pick, and you mentioned it, by the way, with Curtis Enos, and then like – Right after you see this guy, and then you see H O F. It's like yeah. you, you miss on a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just imagine if they had gotten that right. So that was so I put Stan on my list at, at number five, even though he was late in the first round. Number four, I went 2008 and Chris Williams, 14th mm -hmm. overall. He was injured when they picked him. He did manage to start for four seasons, but but Brandon Albert, two-time Pro Bowl guard, was the very next pick. And then there were four other multi-time -pro, Pro Bowlers in the first round. Chris Johnson, Aqib Tlaib, Tackle, Dwayne Brown, uh, cornerback Dominic Rogers, Cromartie. Like, just a, just, a, just a straight, awful, terrible, m misinformed, not doing your homework, uh, horrendous, horrendous swing at it. With Chris what kind Williams. of and what kind of made that one worse is they draft him as a left tackle and then the guy ends up having to play guard you know in the right. NFL after having back surgery so it's like oh great you can't even play the premium position we drafted you to be right right completely basically and utterly worthless uh, all right here's my flip with you I I put Curtis uh, Enos number three uh, and and you went through it here but so this dude was fifth overall three seasons Patrick. Three seven three two two three is yards per carry. I mean, that's that's impressive. Yeah, um, that also sounds like my GPA in college by semester <laughs> too. So yeah, I mean, it's not good. Yeah, I I was the opposite. I was like, I was I was I was climbing up like one five to one nine, and I, I ended up with a powerful two four. Thank you, University of Iowa, go Hawks. Uh, thank God I made it through. But you know, there were two Hall of Famers in the first round there: Randy Moss and and and, and Alan Panica. Who we we've talked to recently? The the Randy Moss thing's funny to me. I was I was at the, uh, the you know the Bulls used to work out at the Multiplex, which is this health club in Deerfield, and yeah. a lot of a lot of NFL guys would show up there. Like I would be playing hoops with Danelle Wolford and Mo Douglas mm -hmm. for old school Bears fans. They might know those names. But another one that would show up was Al Harris, who who held out on the '85 Super Bowl team. Him and Todd Bell. Al was a great guy, but I remember being like 16 year old Carm sitting in the steam room with big Al Harris and like, this is like highlight moment. And I'm like, Al, who do you think they should pick? He's like, I'm telling you, Randy Moss is going to be sweet. They should take Randy. I'm, I was thinking like, eh, what the hell does Al know? Al knew, man. Yeah. Uh, 
know, it seemed like everybody knew, and obviously hindsight 2020, but everybody knew. Yeah, and we went with Curtis Enos, who I was, you know, I'm going back researching this stuff today. Skip, he wrote, he, I forgot, he held out, uh, and Skip Bayless, who was working for the Trib at the time, wrote this scathing piece on, like, what the hell is his agent doing? Like, his agent cost him, like, $3.6 million with this weird holdout, and then they weren't, like, willing to follow through on it, and so he got this, like, terrible, like, the Bears had already soured on him, so he got this terrible deal to stay. Uh, it's really just kind of bizarre to relive that one. Um, all right. Number two, you, that's by Kevin White, uh, which was just a, an incredible window into what we had with Ryan Pace, trying to be smartest guy in the room. You, you had – dude had one good year at West Virginia, junior college guy, uh, and he was – you know, he killed it at the combine, all that, but uh, ran a 4 3 five, 40, but just, a, just an awful swing, passing on guys like Todd Gurley, who had been first and second team SEC. He went three picks later, offensive rookie of the year, and he becomes the offensive player of the year. Let's take let's not let's not bet on that guy. Let's take the guy with one year at West Virginia. And then I I, I stuck at number one with I, I just I still can't believe it. To to this day. You traded up from three to two, giving up your your third rounder, your fourth rounder, and your third rounder, three picks to move up one spot to draft Mitchell Dam Trubisky with Deshaun Watson and, and Patrick Mahomes in that draft. I mean, should have been fired literally on the spot. What are you doing? Excuse me? Uh, that I, I So I put Trubisky at number one. Even though, yeah, okay, fine, they went to the playoffs, and, and Mitch is not as – I mean, he's twice the player as – Cade McDowell or whatever, but I, I I made him my number one. That's an that's an interesting argument. You know, I'm going through my top five, and initially I, I had Trubisky in the top five, largely because of the guys that they didn't take. You know, Mahomes and Watson. Um, Mahomes <laughs> looks like this guy's already going to be Hall of Famer. We'll see what happens with Deshaun Watson over the you know history is going to tell that story. But from a talent perspective. I mean, the, the guy Deshaun Watson was the guy I wanted in that draft. I wrote several things about it, uh, why the Bears could, literally couldn't pass on Deshaun Watson. So yeah, in real time, I, I was I was livid that they traded up. You know what they did to get Trubisky. Had they done it to get Mahomes or Watson, we're saying, oh, this was a great trade. You know, you, you got to give up a lot to get a lot. But I ultimately, I, I think I took Trubisky off because okay, you know, this guy did start. Technically, he was on a team that went to the playoffs twice. Um, but like you said, from a production performance standpoint, it was a much better player than Cade McNown. But who they took or who they passed up to take this guy, it's really hard to find any fault in, the, in that argument because Mahomes, Watson, good Lord, had the Bears had either of those two guys over the last few years, we, we might be talking about the Bears having a Super Bowl here. <laughs> 